In this video lesson, we're going to have a look at the Python Dictionary Update method. This program statement shows us how we can create an instance of the dictionary class. And this instance will be bound to this name capitals. And if we look here, we can see that the dictionary will be made up of three key value pairs. It can be useful to represent program statements and their effect by drawing a schematic diagram. Now this schematic diagram here is a representation of an instance of the dictionary class and you can see here I've used the name capitals which means that this is bound to this particular instance of the dictionary class and in this area you can see that I've shown the methods that have been defined in the dictionary class and these methods now are available to the instance. In the center here in the green area you can see that I have showed the three key value pairs that were defined in the program statement here. Let's now consider this program statement here and you can see what's happening is I'm going to create another instance of the dictionary class and that instance is going to be shown here and you can see that this object is bound to this name more capitals and it has the same methods that the object here has because it's based on the same class however here you can see that we only have two key value pairs because that's all that was defined here in the program statement. Now after these two program statements have executed let's say that the next program statement to execute is the one that's appearing now and we can see that this is a message and it is a message to this instance which in fact is shown in the diagram here and the method to be invoked is this method here. Now, if we look at the method we can see in brackets that we're passing in the name of this object. We can show the effect of this particular message here in the diagram as follows. We can see a message coming to the object here. Now this message, if you look at it, it's saying update and in brackets it is more capitals. Now this message is going to invoke this particular method here. Now what this method will do, it'll have a look at this object here. Why will it have a look at this object? Because if you look here, we've passed the name of this object. Consequently, what will happen is this will have access to these key value pairs and these key value pairs will be added to this object as shown here. We can therefore see that this particular instance, this object, now has five key value pairs, whereas this particular instance still maintains the two value pairs that it had previous to this particular program statement. So this program statement only affected this particular instance. It left this instance alone. Of course, this instance was accessed to allow for these pairs to be copied across to here. So we say that this object has been updated by these pairs that resided in another instance of the dictionary class. Let's consider this computer program here. On this line you can see we create an instance of the dictionary class and this instance will be bound to the name capitals. And we showed this schematically a moment ago in this video. Now this particular line here will print the dictionary to the runtime. And here is the runtime and we'll have a look at what happens when we execute this particular line. And we'll see that what we get out is this. And we can quite clearly see that we have the three key value pairs that were defined here in the code. Now on this line we can see we're creating another instance of the dictionary class that will have the name more underscore capitals and we should see that it has two key value pairs. This line will now print the makeup of this particular dictionary and we can see that here and we should see that it has the two key value pairs. Now this line is a message. It is a message to this instance and it will cause this method to be invoked and you can see we're passing in this particular object here where this is the name that's bound to the object. Now what this particular line will do, it'll update this 
object with the key pair values that appear in this object. Consequently, when I come to this line, it will print out what capitals now contains as its key value pairs. And we can see they appear here. And if you have a look at those key value pairs, you should see there are indeed five of them, proving that we've added to these three key value pairs these two key value value pairs now this particular line will print what's in more capitals in terms of key value pairs and let's have a look at what that is and you can see that is here and it still has the same two key value pairs so that particular object was not altered i.e. more capitals was not altered but capitals was we've updated capitals with the items that were in the more capitals object before i finish this video lesson i wish to take a look at this particular output here this is the key value pairs of capitals after it has been updated with the key value pairs spain madrid italy rome and you can see that spain madrid is here and italy rome is here and you might be thinking well, why is this not added to the end of the dictionary? Well, I'd like to remind you that a dictionary is not ordered. What we can see here is that all five key value pairs are within the dictionary, but there's no order implied. The purpose of a dictionary is fast access and we gain fast access because internally hash codes are generated and these allow for fast access access to data structures that contain hash codes and a dictionary is shown here and we have to realize it's not in any particular order now let me stress that by looking at this output you can see the order of the key value pairs here are france paris uk london germany berlin if you look up here you can see that in the code it was uk london france paris germany berlin a completely different order as they appeared here well that's because there is no order when we're dealing with dictionaries check out the supporting website for these videos in addition why not follow me on twitter as i issue a tweet every time i upload a new video